Every carpet has a, a, a distance in between the tufts, yeah? And we want to try and reduce that distance. We want to try and get the tufts as close together so that we don't get a shadow joint. So what I'm going to do first off is adjust this bit just here to just over the thickness of the backing and tighten that back screw. I'm going to be joining this side to that side. I'm not going to cheat and just join that back together. I'll cut another bit off and we'll join it together. So this is the side that I'm going to keep. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to drop the left hand blade. Okay, because I want to work the same way as the pole. So get in there. And literally just follow down that channel that I've just created. Just there, nice clean cut, no fibre loss or anything. I'm now going to take a piece out of this side. <laughs> right, so, but what I'm going to do now is change the blade over. I'm going to drop the right hand side. The left hand side will cut obviously closest to the left hand side, closest to that row of tufts. This side will cut as close as it possibly can. <laughs> Just set him up here, Dan. <laughs> And there we go, nice clean cut. Somebody put a double row of gripper down there just to mess me up. And I'll look at that and I'll think... Yeah. Yeah, I'll be happy with that, that'll be a pretty good joint. <laughs> British Standard states that you should seam seal every joint that you do. You should apply some, some sort of like something to stop it from fraying, to stop it from falling to bits to, to protect that edge. This is a tufted carpet. The chances of this tufted carpet actually fraying once it's joined together is pretty remote. But we're going to stay on the safe side and going to apply some seam sealer if there's anything in this bottle. Whose is this? Right, okay, now, if there was some in here, I could show you how to apply it. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to mime it. <laughs> yeah? And what you do is literally get that on the edge there, hold that down, and run down along the edge of the carpet, all the way along, applying some seed sealer to that edge. Yes, or some stroke of magic. Magic, you can't see that, can you? But I know it's there. <laughs> yeah, you can see a bit of it on there. That's how it should be applied all the way down. I then just run my thumb and forefinger down there, working it into the backing and taking off any excess. You do that to both sides, okay? You don't have to let it go off, as a lot of people will do. They think, oh yeah, it's got to go off, then you seam it together. You seam it together while it's still wet. If it's still wet, it will actually join together like that as well. Rather than just the tape on the back, that will literally set together. So when you bend it, it doesn't do that. It will do that, it will stay together. You see we've got some really high quality uh, heat seam tape here. Now should put some tension on this joint. The joint should always be done first by the way guys. I've done it before where you fit the whole thing and then you have the filler on the side and then you put the join in, you join it up and then you fit that bit. Well it's the wrong way really, you can't get as much tension on it and whatever. You should actually seam it up first and then go through your stretching pad and that way you will get perfect tension on it all the way around. So what I should do is put some tension on this first because it's not fitted. And if I don't put tension on it, when it comes to stretching it, everything else will stretch, but because this has got the tape on the back, it's not going to stretch as much. So it could sort of like, especially if it's a pattern carpet, it's going to sort of like, uh, you know, show out. We should actually be seaming up on a solid floor or on a solid surface or a hard surface. 
But as you notice today, we're doing everything wrong. Yeah, I quite like doing everything wrong. <laughs> Makes a change. Yeah. Um, we haven't got anything underneath there to actually uh, seam it up on, so I'm just going to do it wrong. Tell you what, it wasn't really popular. Is it not worth it? The light wasn't right enough. It is now, isn't it? Right? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay, so we've got that. This is a seam weight. This is seven kilos of solid steel. This is what actually makes the carpet or, or the, the adhesives, the resins in the adhesive, come right up into the backing so that you get 100% grab on the backing of your carpet. If you don't, if you just lay it in two, it's only going to sit on the, the high bar parts of the backing, which is probably only about 30% of the backing. So you're going to get a join which is sort of like 60% reduced in, in strength. Spike roller, no need for a spike roller. The spike roller will just distort the pile, okay? If you've, if you've managed to cut a join, good. If you seam it up properly, well, you just side not side have to use the spike roller. <laughs> Only time we ever use it is on a bull nose that hasn't been done properly. Is that hot enough yet? Heat seam iron should be set between two and three. All, all thermostats are completely different. Really, it's trial and error. You shouldn't have it any more than three. Yeah, you'll get it done quicker if you have it on four or five. Because all that does is burns the resins and then you get a brittle joint and it will just break up. So the lower you can have it, the better it is. The other thing is you won't get heat transfer coming up through into the pile. All piles are heat set. The, the twist in it, the pile direction, everything. If you're working against the pile, so you're going back against the pile, you could actually reset it at a slightly different angle and you end up with a light or a dark line going down that joint. You have a perfect joint, but you've got this three inch line all the way down. Or it can open up that it can relax that twist in the yarn and it looks a completely, well not a completely different colour, but a slightly different colour and that, that join just sort of like becomes visible. So, I'll just have that. The other thing is, is if you're seaming on top of the underlay, the underlay, most underlays are synthetic fibres, products, whatever, and you're putting heat on top of it, which means it can melt it. I don't mean it starts running out of the room, but it can just compress it slightly in, in, to, to a, a, a thinner thickness, which means you end up with a dip. I don't know if you've ever seen it on joints, you can see a dip, and that's because people have actually joined up on top of the underlay. The other thing is, is with this tape, this tape has got stitches that go all the way through to the back and the adhesive runs down through those stitches and sticks it to the underlay underneath. And that way you can't get a, a proper stretch on that. So it's always best to seam up on a solid floor. Try and get both sides of the join in at the same time and then it's all it needs is just a gentle rub, not a, you don't need a deep tissue massage on it or anything like that. It's a gentle rub, I'm sure most of us are, are quite familiar with a gentle rub. <laughs> so, just ensuring that the backing touches as well. Don't move the iron anymore than the length of the iron. If you do, you'll end up with cold spots. There's nothing worse than a cold spot on your back in bed of a night time. So, no rush, not trying to do this quick. What I'm trying to do is give the customer an invisible joint. That will win you more work. The rest of it could look like a heap of put, really. The customer's expecting to see this line running down the room. If they can't see that, you're the best thing since sliced bread. Simple as that, yeah? So it's worth taking a bit of time over this.
And at the end of the day, there's no need for a spike roller on it. You've got pretty good joy in there once that's actually tensioned in the room and what have you. As fat as a pancake, lovely day. Yeah, I want to join some of us. We've got to get out of this job, haven't we? Yes. I don't want to have to stand there and go, uh, sorry, I'll, I'll come. Yeah, and I'll buy another piece of carpet. Yeah, no. So, I'm going to seam a bit on. But if you heat seam it on there, have you ever tried getting that over the nose of a step and tried to get it into the crotch of the step? I see you've messed up, yeah. It's cover in, right? <laughs> it, it don't work, does it? It's, it's always too, you know, it's, it's not sort of like fiber or whatever. So what I want to show you here is literally just something like this. So we've messed up. Yeah, and I need to join that back together, the cuts, moves, whatever. So I need to join that back together. Right, so what I'm going to do is actually... So, got that, just sort of stabilise that a bit. I'm going to use a bit of this, this tape just here. All this is is, is build a scrim. I'm just going to use a bit of that on there. And no, that ain't going to stick it together. That ain't going to work, but this is the bit that adds the strength. Is all that is 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 fiberglass. I've got this just here, and hopefully it's stayed hot enough for long enough. Dan, can you pass us one of those irons there? Yeah. Yeah, Literally, the cold irons are just something that I've had made up. If you're doing a lot of this, we put in logos and things like that, or a design or whatever, you can do this and do it all on a stretch fit. But they get quite hot and then they don't cool it down, so we literally have a couple or three or whatever and just sort of change them about. And that now. Once you put that there, but that is ultra flexible and you've saved yourself a replacement or whatever. It's a nice piece of kit, it's just you don't even have to have the special nozzle. If you've got a hot milk gun, you can use that and like a, a, a wallpaper scraper or something like that and just spread it out across that tape. The cold irons, you have to have those, otherwise it's going to take a, a ages for that to, to cool down for you to actually, you know, go and, and then fit it. But that's that's cooled down enough. There you go. That's a, just a quickie there, guys, on the on the hot melt sort of scrimp.